The Miami Hurricanes will have at least two veteran transfer portal defensive players visiting this weekend. So let's hope for some good news. How about that? You are Locked on Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricanes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy New Year. I am your host, Alex Dono. I'm a University of Miami alumnus, longtime South Florida sports radio vet and contributor to allhurricanes.com. And thank you so much for making Locked On Canes your first listen today. We're available free wherever you get your podcasts and available free on YouTube. So, Hurricanes will have at least two and hopefully more than two transfer portal players visiting campus in Coral Gables this weekend. Kudos and shout out to Gabby Yerudia from Inside the U for being, I believe, the first to report on these. So I give credit where credit is due. And Gabby's a good friend and a great reporter. So per Yerudia, Hurricanes will be getting visits this weekend from Iowa cornerback Terry Roberts and Arkansas defensive lineman Isaiah Nichols. Possible more names could emerge, but those are two that can be confirmed right now. Now, in the case of both of these players, Roberts and Nichols, they're both six-year seniors. One year of eligibility left, veteran stopgap type of guys, veteran presences. And you know, when you talk about cornerbacks and defensive tackles, obviously the bigger glaring need for Miami is at defensive tackle. But I guess anytime you have an opportunity to bring in a veteran corner who can potentially provide you a nickel option, can play special teams, you explore options like this. Uh, so... Here's what we're looking at with Roberts. Uh, Gabby Yerudia shared some of his stats. I've got some thoughts on Roberts as well. But per Gabby, he's veteran Hawkeye defender who played over 200 snaps this past fall before being injured. He earned a 79.9 coverage grade, which is pretty good. Uh, in 17 targets, he broke up four passes, intercepted another. Uh, he recovered two fumbles uh, this past season. And as I mentioned, he appears to have one year of eligibility left, was a class of 2018 guy. Uh, so I hear, uh, this is me now talking, Dono, uh, I hear that Roberts was a strong special teams player at Iowa, so that can be part of the role that he plays at Miami if he does decide to come to Miami. So it's it's nice to have veteran options. Like Even if he wouldn't be a standout corner here, like if Roberts were to pick Miami, this would not be nearly as impactful as Devontae Brown uh, transferring to Miami. I believe Devontae Brown is probably a starter this coming year. I don't think I would say the same thing uh, for, for Roberts, but it's obviously nice to have depth and it's nice to have veterans in the room when you're talking about guiding young players because Miami has some really young players coming in in the secondary I mean Antoine Jackson who really should be going into his final year of high school but he's leaving high school early to come to Miami Robert Stafford Damari Brown and of course Cormani McLean if he ends up coming to Miami um, and so, you know, Roberts, again, doesn't like jump off the page. It's not a program changer or anything like that, but could be an interesting veteran option if he decides to pick Miami. So let's talk about the defensive tackle from Arkansas. Isaiah Nichols, he checks off the size box. That's for sure. Six foot three, 302 pounder. He's played in nearly 1600 snaps. Gabby writes over five years with the Razorbacks. He has generated 28 pressures during his time in Fayetteville. So Isaiah Nichols, uh, he's actually a hometown Arkansas guy. He grew up in Arkansas. That was the home program for him. Uh, it was a consensus three-star prospect coming out of high school. And similarly to Roberts, the cornerback, Nichols was class of 2018. So he's got one final year of eligibility left. So could be a good stopgap guy. Uh, I, I did some additional research on this player. And again, this is not like a program changer, but he does have the size and experience. And Miami's got a need for big experience defensive tackles, okay? Uh, per uh, the site that covers, this is a site that covers Arkansas Razorback store, Sports, bestofarkansasports.com. You know, despite Nichols actually became a full-time starter this past year on the Razorbacks and he played more snaps than any of their other defensive linemen. He actually didn't have that productive of a season. Uh, interestingly enough, he was more productive in previous years as either a backup or a part-time starter. 
um, you know, prior to becoming the full-time starter in 2022. In the previous years, he started 11 of 23 games, and he was actually more productive as a rotational guy. And I would think rotational guy is the role that he would play at Miami if he does arrive, because we know Kevin Steele, uh, and it's the philosophy of Mario Cristobal that goes on down to Kevin Steele. They like to rotate their defensive linemen heavily. They love a rotation. I mean, I, I thought Leonard Taylor, for example, should have played a lot more snaps than he did. Daryl Jackson, who left in the transfer portal, played more snaps than Leonard Taylor did last year. So they like to rotate their defensive line a lot. Um, so despite all of his playing time, they write at, uh, at Arkansas, uh, best of Arkansas sports, despite all of his playing time last year, wasn't particularly productive on the stat sheet. They said he finished last season with only 16 tackles, one tackle for loss, two quarterback hurries, one pass breakup. He received a 55.1 pro football focus grade this season, which was down from the solid 69.7 mark that he earned the previous year. Uh, he ends his Arkansas career with 78 tackles, six for a loss, and two and a half sacks in his career. So my take on Nichols, you know, he was, I, I guess, I don't know, you could say kind of a jag in the SEC, but when you think about who Miami's losing versus who Miami's trying to bring in, uh, he would honestly be better than Jordan Miller, who Miami lost in the portal. Uh, Miller didn't really do much of anything of note. While Nichols, uh, despite you know not being one of the top defensive tackles in the SEC, to put it kindly, he held his own and started more than 20 games for Arkansas in the SEC. So uh, I think he'd be a pretty good replacement for Jordan Miller if you look at it that way. Now, the guy who's harder to replace who Miami lost is Daryl Jackson. And I guess right now you could maybe consider Thomas Gore to be Jackson's replacement. Uh, Gore was extremely productive at Georgia State in G5. So I'm interested to see how his production might translate into the ACC. But in the case of Isaiah Nichols, again, it's not like you'd be, if he does decide to commit to Miami, he's coming for a visit this weekend. That doesn't necessarily mean he's committing. But if he does decide to take his talents from Arkansas to Coral Gables, you'd be getting a guy with over 20 games of starters experience at a prominent SEC program. You could do a lot worse than that. And again, it's six foot three, over 300 pounds. He checks off the size boxes, a very good space eater up front. Uh, and I would say Miami can definitely use the help at defensive tackle. So I'm hoping those visits from uh, the cornerback, Terry Roberts, and the defensive tackle, Isaiah Nichols, uh, out of Iowa and Arkansas, respectively. I hope those visits go well this weekend because Mario, uh, Mario Cristobal and Miami, they've gotten quality in the transfer portal so far but they haven't gotten quantity and there are some important spots to fill. Cause like we've talked about it over the last couple of weeks and I, I don't put corner right now is the most premium need you have to fill, but defensive tackle is a premium need. You have to fill in the transfer portal wide receiver as well. I'm hoping Miami gets some good news in the coming weeks from Dante Thornton, who appears to be their top wide receiver target in the transfer portal. He visited in mid December former Oregon Duck, was recruited and played under Mario Cristobal there. Uh, and then center. Center is another important position that Miami wants to fill in the transfer portal. So I'm, I'm reading the tea leaves here, and here's a player not visiting this weekend, but hopefully maybe Miami can get him for a visit this weekend because, again, we don't know for sure who's coming and who's not outside of the two names that I just mentioned. But did you see who's in the transfer portal now? UCF center Matt Lee has hit the portal. Miami should go after him, right? We mentioned on an episode, I think last week, that uh, the Hurricanes don't appear to be aggressively pursuing any guards or tackles right now after landing JV on Cohen, but they're definitely interested in bringing in centers. And Matt Lee, who's leaving UCF in the portal, another guy with one year of eligibility left, he was UCF's highest graded offensive player last season per pro football focus, right? Uh, you know, He's going to be getting calls, I would think, from dozens of programs around the country because he was so productive during his career at center. So hopefully Miami gets on his list. So when you see one of the most productive, one of the more productive centers in America entering the portal, uh, I, I would hope that Miami is able to place a call there. So that's what we are looking at 
with transfer portal visitors and potential transfer portal targets. And folks, we have a lot more coming up on this episode of Locked on Canes. Um, there have been folks telling me they've been all over our YouTube comments and our Twitter comments since yesterday saying, I'm not putting enough stock into Miami's newest quarterback commit, who we did an episode on yesterday. I am not putting enough stock in Vic Sutton, the newest Miami Hurricane commit. And are there reasons to freak out about one of my favorite assistant coaches in Miami? Could he be getting tempted to take his coaching talent somewhere else? Is this real or is this rumor? We will talk about that and so much more here on Locked on Canes. Right after we talk about the incredible services being provided to you at LinkedIn Jobs. Folks, if you're a small business owner or a hiring manager, you know that success in 2023 all depends on the team members you surround yourself with. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. With LinkedIn Jobs, you can hire qualified candidates more efficiently by matching open roles with people who have the skills, values, and experiences to help you achieve your goals. LinkedIn Jobs helps you quickly attract qualified candidates to your open jobs with targeting tools. Guys, I have found jobs before through LinkedIn Jobs. I know this works. They go beyond resume data by using insights from your job post company and their 875 million member profiles to put your post in front of the most qualified candidates. LinkedIn Jobs makes it easy to screen and rate applicants based on your job qualifications all on one platform. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to and faster. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen today. We're available free wherever you get your podcasts and available free on YouTube. Uh, so I wanted to get, we got this Twitter question. Uh, and by the way, you can tweet us at Locked on Canes. And if you follow us at Locked on Canes, we will follow you back. And I get what I imagine to be a panicked Twitter question because most of these letters are capitals. He says, Dono, this is from Ty, who follows us on Twitter. Dono, why the bleep are FSU fans in DeMarcus Van Dyke's comments talking about hiring him to Florida State? So DeMarcus Van Dyke, Coach DVD, he's a defensive analyst on Miami staff, which means he's not an on the field coach, uh, former Miami cornerback, former Miami defensive backs coach. He's a defensive analyst uh, and he's one of Miami's best recruiters on staff. And guys, I have been saying it for weeks, if not months, I want them to promote coach DVD. I want DVD to have an on the field role. So where does this Florida state talk come from? Uh, and I'm glad Ty asked the question because uh, I, I did see this uh, going around yesterday on Florida State fans talking about hiring DeMarcus Van Dyke away from Miami. In my opinion, it's a big nothing burger, these rumors. Big nothing burger. So here's what happened. The guy who runs the 24-7 FSU page, who's, uh, you know, maybe he's good at what he does. I don't know if he is or isn't because I don't pay a lot of attention to, uh, to the Florida state 24 seven page, but I can tell you the guy who runs that 24 seven for Florida state, he's a big Miami troll and a hater. Like he's always tweet. It's always in his feelings. It's Miami, this Miami, that he has like a weird obsession with Miami. And so here's what he did. Uh, I guess Florida state's got a vacant defensive backs coaching job right now. So he wrote a big post about potential candidates for the Florida State DB coach job. It's basically a wish list, what he wrote. And I found the post yesterday. It's got about 20 names on it. And yeah, one of those in a section that he called, quote, names to note in Power Five, he listed Miami's DeMarcus Van Dyke as one of those names to note. Now, nowhere in there is any sort of an actual report saying DeMarcus Van Dyke is a candidate or will become a candidate. It's just him throwing the name out there. And he mentions the fact that DVD, when he played at Miami, played under Randy Shannon, who's on Florida State staff. And so, like, it's, to my knowledge, to this point, 
There is no actual reporting being done that Demarcus Van Dyke is a candidate for the Florida State defensive backs job. This whole rumor and hysteria started from the Florida State 24-7 page listing Demarcus Van Dyke as basically a hopeful candidate for the job. So he's not a candidate. He's just a guy on a wish list right now. And obviously Florida State fans saw that post and then they show up in Demarcus Van Dyke's Twitter mentions out of pure desperation, basically begging him to come to Florida State because A, he's a damn good recruiter. And B, they would love to take something away from Miami. That would that would make those uh that would make those weirdos sleep really well at night if they could take away one of the top young assistant coaches on Miami staff. Uh, so it, it is what it is. I, I'm going to say it's a big nothing burger to this point. And, you know, I, I still want Demarcus Van Dyke to get promoted because if Miami promotes him, you're going to have less of these rumors out there about other schools bringing him on for bigger jobs than the one he has here. So hopefully Mario Cristobal is uh, has seen enough and he wants to he wants to give some kind of a promotion to Demarcus Van Dyke. All right, so uh, here's something uh, Miami has uh, has not, you know, I, I don't know how close Miami ever was to making this happen, but, you know, we did talk a couple weeks ago or about a week ago, I guess, about uh, unsigned Milton wide receiver Raymond Cottrell, who a uh, four-star wide receiver, he did he was a Georgia commit, but Kind of like Cormani McLean, he did not sign with Georgia during the early signing period. And that led a bunch of people wondering, is he going to end up flipping somewhere else? Uh, and the reason why Miami fans were a little bit hopeful, first of all, again, we need tall wide receivers. I think Cottrell is like six foot four. He's got really good size. But he was a high school teammate of Emory Williams, Miami's incoming quarterback. So we thought, hey, if he's going to flip somewhere, why don't you keep uh, why don't you keep the, the good times rolling with your high school quarterback? Uh, but it sounds like he wanted to play in the SEC, and so he flipped from Georgia to Texas A&M. So, you know, I, I don't know why. I don't know exactly why he isn't committing to Georgia, but I think even if he didn't play for Georgia, he wanted to play in the SEC from what I understand. So he has flipped from Georgia to Texas A&M. So that's one that Miami missed out on. Um, I, I want to revisit our big topic from yesterday. So we devoted a lot of time yesterday – to a Miami Hurricanes verbal commit who's going to be a preferred walk-on. Uh, he's not going to be taking up a scholarship, but the Hurricanes have landed a commit from quarterback Vic Sutton. And that's for this year, for the class of 2023. Vic Sutton is coming to Miami, and uh, I thought I hyped him up a lot, I, even though I got the state that he lives in wrong. And I apologize for that, because I said on the episode yesterday that he's from the state of Missouri, I jotted that wrong on my notes. I jotted it down. He's from Mississippi. You'd see how those two states are, are confusable. <laughs> I'm an idiot, I know. But he's actually from Mississippi, not Missouri. So I apologize for that. Uh, but, you know, I did hype him up because I went uh, I went down a, a rabbit hole yesterday morning watching Vic Sutton's huddle film and some of his highlight reels available uh, through YouTube and social media. And he looks better than most any walk-on you're ever going to see. And he had some power five offers. Uh, so, you know, it seems like, uh, you know, Miami wasn't the only bigger school that, that wanted his services down here. Very, very capable dual threat quarterback with a strong, accurate arm, excellent pocket presence. When you see the way this guy has moves to elude the rush. And when he gets out of that pocket, very capable runner, and he's got juke moves that are breaking ankles left and right. Like, this is an exciting player to watch, you know, playing high school ball in Mississippi. And, you know, I, I talked about loving his tape, and I'm kind of shocked that he's a preferred walk-on and not a more highly touted recruit. And, you know, one of our YouTube commenters yesterday who lives in that area in Mississippi, uh, he said that he's seen Vic Sutton play live in high school and he thinks this kid is the real deal. Um, you know, something else that was going on with Sutton was in November, he tore his ACL. So that's something he's recovering from. That may have hurt his recruiting stock. Although from where I sit, it's not like I would expect this young man to be a factor as a true freshman anyway. So recover from the ACL, be ready for 2024. That's perfectly fine with me. Uh, but he also, he hasn't appeared in a lot of the big camps which is where you know a lot of the recruiting analysts out there who decide who's a three-star, four-star, five-star, 
they really want to see you in person at these camps. And apparently he's not done a lot of that. So that's one of the reasons why Sutton is not a more highly touted recruit. And, you know, he'd probably be appearing in more of these camps had he not just torn his ACL. So that's un unfortunate for him. And yet, to be fair, you can never completely write off a quarterback just because they're a walk-on. A lot of people have pointed out the fact that Stetson Bennett, who's on the verge of winning a second straight national championship, he began his career as a walk-on. So, Liz, obviously stories like that are few and far between. You don't have that many walk-ons winning national titles and, you know, quarterbacking top programs, but it has happened before. It's going to happen again. And so, yeah, if, uh, if a lot of folks who have watched Vic Sutton more than I have think that this young man is not only underrated, but criminally underrated, I would love to see him get an opportunity to do something at the University of Miami. I would love it. Okay, we have uh, we have something very serious to get to on the other side because there was a moment last night in the NFL that I think reminds us all that there are bigger things to life than just football. I mean, we talk about a game. Like, you know, I, I get paid to talk about a game, which is unreal, and we all watch this game for fun, but you know, we see incidents that remind us that life is bigger than football. I uh, got some notes about the Miami Hurricanes hoops team as well. So keep it locked right here to Locked on Canes. Thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen today. We are part of the awesome Locked on Podcast Network, and the show is available free on YouTube and available free Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Odyssey, wherever you get your podcasts. If there's a platform, Locked on Canes is going to be on it, man. I am sending huge prayers and I'm, you know, still it's it's tough to even have fun conversations after what I saw last night on Monday Night Football. I am praying for DeMar Hamlin of the Buffalo Bills. This guy's is so much bigger than football. The Bills safety uh, suffered cardiac arrest in the first quarter of Monday Night Football last night. They ended up postponing the game, which I think was the right decision. Um it was one of the most traumatic things uh, I've watched on television. Uh, I'm a soccer fan, so it, it reminds me reminded me of what happened to uh, Christian Eriksen on the Denmark team at the Euros in 2021 when he suffered cardiac arrest on the pitch, uh, had to be revived. And in, in the case of Hamlin, um, at the time that I am recording this, I don't know if there's going to be any update for those who listen to this or watch this later on on Tuesday or on Wednesday. I hope we get some great news before then. At the time that I'm recording this, he's still in critical condition in a Cincinnati hospital. Um, from from what I've read, uh, it sounds like he is stable but critical. So I can't I can't even imagine what his family, friends and teammates are going through right now. And, you know, Hamlin is a player uh, I watched at the collegiate level as well, played for the Pittsburgh Panthers. He's a Pittsburgh area guy. So to everyone in the Buffalo Bills family, the Pitt Panthers family, and those who are in his literal family and his friends, I I don't even know what to say, man. I mean, to see, to see things like this happen to, you know, people who play a game for a living uh, and do this for our entertainment and do this out of the love that they have for football for something like this to happen. I don't even know. I don't even know what to say. It's uh God bless Damar Hamlin. And I'm, I'm praying for you and I'm wishing you the speediest of recoveries, man. And uh, wow. I, I don't even know. It's it's kind of hard to even go on after that. So for, forgive forgive me if like my tone is kind of strange, you know, for the remainder of this episode. Um, Miami Hurricanes hoops team has risen from number 14 to number 12. Uh, we obviously knew that their ranking would move up and should move up after beating Notre Dame last week on the road, which was a quality win. So the Hurricanes now at number 12 in the country. This is the highest ranking the Jim Laranegas team has held since 2017. They are they are a force of nature. Like, I love watching this Canes basketball team play. Now, still, the Hurricanes are ranked a spot behind Virginia. <laughs> Now, I know Virginia, they've got a more impressive victories resume to this point than Miami, but I still think Miami should be ranked ahead of Virginia because Miami's got one loss, Virginia's got two losses, and Virgi one of Virginia's two losses was head-to-head -to, -head to Miami. So I, I feel like Miami should be ranked a spot higher than Virginia, but, you know, the rankings gods disagree with me. 
Uh, so Miami's going to be back in action this week, Wednesday night, tomorrow night. The Hurricanes will play on the road at Georgia Tech, a game that they should win. And then they're going to have a week off before hosting Boston College, who they should beat the following Wednesday. So, you know, I can complain all I want to about the Canes being number 12 and not number 10 or 11. But as we all know, Jim Laranaga's team, if they keep winning, these problems are going to work themselves out, my friends. Uh, I thought this was cool uh, seeing this because we we talked a lot on Monday's episode about, A, how underrated Ruben Bain is, the Miami Hurricanes edge rushing signee. He should be a five-star. It's one of the most decorated high school football players of all time. He should be a five-star. He's only a four-star. He might earn his fifth star after the Under Armour game, which, by the way, the Under Armour All-America game is happening today at 5 p.m. I think it's going to be on ESPN. So if you, if you have a chance to watch it, you can watch Ruben Bain, who I think is going to dominate, Robert Stafford, and you can watch Miami verbal commit Cormani McLean. <laughs> so hopefully he ends up being a cane. But the three of them will be in action at the Under Armour game. And uh, and Rivals wrote a great review of Ruben Bain so far at Under Armour practices. And uh, Ruben even shared this on his Twitter. And this is a pretty cool synopsis. They say Bain did not disappoint during the UA game practice sessions. The four stars first step is too much for most defensive linemen. And the ones who may recover have trouble competing against his strength. Going against Amir Herring, Bain put the big man on skates with his drive and extension, one-arming him into the QB dummy. Bain also made quick work of offensive tackle Miles McVay, Ipani Lalulu, and Caden Green. So Ruben Bain has he's been one of the consensus standout performers and Under Armour practices, and I, I hope he's able to follow that up with a solid dominant performance in the Under Armour All-America game today. So, guys, let, let's all, again, let's pray today. Uh, thoughts and prayers to DeMar Hamlin and his family that he recovers because it's uh, this is bigger than football. And we'll talk to you guys again throughout the week on another episode of Locked on Canes. And after you make us your first listen, make sure you make Locked on Sports today your second listen. Peter Bukowski brings you the biggest stories from around the sports world in 20 minutes. Get the analysis and opinions before anyone else with our local and national experts and insiders. Locked on Sports Today podcast available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. We'll see you tomorrow on another Locked on Canes, part of the awesome Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day.